Oh, thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Uh, the lives of LGBTQ Ugandans are under attack in their country. And the new play, The Rolling Stone, currently at Lincoln Center Theater, uses that backdrop to tell a devastating story about a religious family caught in the crosshairs of growing violence. Please welcome the play's stars, Atel Blackson Wood, Robert Gilbert, and the director, Sahim Ali. Thank you so much. <laughs> Atu. Atu, did I say did I did I say your name right? Atu. Atu, yeah, thank you. I'm so sorry. It's all good. <laughs> Um, yeah, and he told me in the green room, and other people told me, and I had it in the prompter, and I still did it wrong. There's some, somehow there's a reason I have this gig. Um, guys, I love the show. Uh, congratulations. And one of the things that I was so struck by, outside of the brilliant performances by not just the two of you, but by the rest of your cast, and the, um, the incredible writing of the play uh, was the minimalism that, go that goes with the direction. Because the play itself is so dramatic, and it takes place inside of a church or by a river and you do have the chance to sort of build out large sets of some kind that you want to, but you were just telling me that the playwright himself called for it to be as minimalist as possible. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so Chris Urch, who's a playwright, actually calls for um, no set in the stage directions, which, you know, is um, a really challenging thing because there has to be something that the actors are on. So then it became about that interpretation of that minimalist impulse, like what would the floor be? What would the background be? Um, what would the boat be if there was no set? You know, and so um, at Lincoln Center Theater in the space called the Mitzi, um, which is kind of like in a thrust, it actually works beautifully because then there's a real sense of theatricality with the audience enveloping the stage, uh, being on like three sides of it. And so um, usually in that kind of space when you have objects that get in the way because you have to get them in and out and there's no clean way to do that. So the play lives really beautifully in that space as a result. I mean, for you as actors, that is not something that you're uncomfortable or not used to. You come up doing scenes without props a lot of the times or doing them in black box theaters or in front of a classroom. But when you get to this point where you're in Lincoln Center, what does it feel like to be doing a play like this without any of those kinds of tools? Um, I, I mean, I guess this play specifically uh, lends itself to, to that because it's it's so dialogue heavy. There's the the scenes are, are very uh, heavy with argument or discussion, yeah. so it's not like we have a lot of time or dead air where we should be going and doing something with a prop. Like all the drama and all the story that is in this play is contained between the people on stage. There's not a lot of external stuff happening um, as that would require a lot of props and set. But y you're right as well, you know, y you come up doing all different types of scenes and shows with different levels of props and set and uh, the issues in this play were heavy enough. So I'm glad I didn't also have to do a bunch of choreography with like, cups and right. I'm things like I mean, I'm wondering about. if a playwright calls for a certain kind of minimalism, if there's a belief that there's a purity in, in, in that in some way, or that knowing that your text itself is more pure without any kind of distraction like that, and if you feel that as actors. Well, I think it's less that, and um, I, I, I feel like it's, uh, the ask is a little bit uh, higher uh, in terms of the imaginative exercise of the play, right? So the play like moves in such a way that it demands that we be able to transition from one space to another. And I think actually having a set and uh, uh, would slow down the momentum of the play. And I think that, um, yeah, so we're, in this, so we're in this space where the language and the arguments are ultimately the, 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 the tools we have to sort of forward our li uh, to move our lives forward as, as characters in the play. And so, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, I guess I would call it a bit of a purity. Yeah, you have a purity of your argument that is sort of the thing that is leading you through the lives of these characters, yeah. And so much of the play, too, is about the pressure that's put on, on Dembe. And so having scenes crash into each other instead of having to wait for a set to come on and off builds that pressure. And, and you start to feel like, God, this kid really doesn't have anywhere to go because every time he stops talking to one person, there's another person right there. And he doesn't have a lot of time mm -hmm. to think or to, to figure out what he wants, yeah. uh, which, again, I think is a key narrative element of the show. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of demands placed on, on Dembe's character from everybody else, even your character who plays his, his, his boyfriend at the time, who is placing a kind of demand on him as well to just sort of come out and be open, un, unbeknownst to him that he has his own privilege that kind of allows that, that of him. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, uh, for me, throughout this process, was one of the things that I did the play uh, before uh, in 2015 and in this production, I had a lot more time to sit with him and, and kind of realize that that is a huge element for me of, of what the character is. You know, he's 
he's asking a lot of somebody who doesn't have a lot, you know, and, and is actually really holding on to the thing he has, which is his family and that familial tie. And um, I think it's an important thing for us to think about when we're thinking about uh, Western influence on, you know, developing countries about how we can minimalize the effort and the impact that a Western viewpoint could have on a, on a different culture. And uh, it's very easy to sit back and think like, well, why don't you just do this? Or why don't you just come out? Or why don't you just stop that? Or why don't you just, and it's like, well, there's a, that's a big ask of a person, like you say, and a really heavy demand. Um, Isn't there a flip side as well to sort of Western influence in, in, in places like Uganda right now, which is like part of the anti-LGBTQ kind of crusade is it was stems from Christian mis missionaries who spent a lot of time there and perpetuated that, that influence. I, exactly. you're not, okay. I mean, those, those, um, the anti-homosexuality sexuality laws actually were a result of colonization. Um, it was not illegal to be a homosexual in Uganda before uh, before uh, the, first the British came, and then again the this latest sort of uh, pop had a lot to do with um, uh, actually specifically American missionaries going to Uganda and um, and spreading their word. <laughs> we'll call it that. Um, <laughs> and. Um, all BS, whatever you want yeah, to call yeah, it. Yeah, you know, and uh, I think like uh, we, we we touch on it a bit, and I think that this relationship is really the the sort of the the door we have into that uh, into that world, into the the actual Western influence in Uganda. Um, so yeah, it's it's. I think it's important ultimately, since this is a play being done in America, um, that there is there is a view toward the Western influence on and the repercussions of that influence in Uganda today, you know? Right, whether it's a more liberal Western influence or one that is a more conservative, exactly. destructive one as well. Um, one of the things that I loved about the play as well is that, that that stuff is all backdrop that we're talking about and everything is intimate. It's all about what is happening between those characters in the moment and the arguments are based off of their own um, objectives or their own personal stakes. How do you as a director, and I'm sure that has to do a lot with working with the playwright, how do you know that all of these sort of outside influences or all of the context for what's happening in Uganda is there when you're keeping everything so intimate between the characters? Well, the really brilliant thing that Chris Urch does is to really focus on the family and on these relationships. <clears throat> so you have the family dynamics and then you have this love story that's happening. And that really is the heart and the root of it. So, um, and within that, you have everything. You have everything you have with a family. You have intense pain, you have tragedy, but you have joy, you have life. Like these are characters who are living, who are moving through tragedy, but also enjoying living. So there's a lot of humor in the play. There is a lot of lightness in the play that, that balances out with all the other themes that are within it. So um, I think that um, that really helps uh, carry the story forward in a way that if it were just like dealing with the political or the social issues, you know, you, you'd be inundated with those. And great drama does that. Great drama has a balance of pathos and, and ethos, you know? But you find a way to sort of remove yourself or the play finds a way to remove itself from what is normally called like an issue play by just simply focusing on the stakes for each character. Within Those have the story. to lead the yeah. issues. The issues, of course, fuel them, but the stakes are so personal. It's a brother and his brother. Yeah. Uh, it's a brother and a sister. It's two men who love each other. Like those are the things that have to be what actually we care about. Um, everything else affects that, but we don't. We we can't care about issues. We care about people. No, the play, uh, as I said before, it's minimalist, but it's also fairly naturalist up until I feel like one moment in the play, which is when Dembe and his sister are, ref are remembering their past and they're kind of a monologue that, that, that you essentially have a, about climbing a tree and everything kind of goes from what was a very naturalist in the moment type of thing to these memories that then you're performing and pantomiming in a certain way. How do you do that as an actor, sort of jump from one different style into a complete another kind? You know, we worked on that moment quite a bit um, and it had, a very, uh, it had a bunch of different iterations. And what we landed on, I think, is ultimately just a return to that childhood, you know? And I think that's something that fuels the connection between those two characters specifically, you know, how they've been there for each other, how they've supported each other, the things that have helped them get through hardship. Um, and I think for that moment to occur where it does, I think it's it's deeply important because it's a moment where, where uh, Dembe's really 
questioning his uh, connection to his lover um, via his, um, his questioning of God. And then, his, uh, and then he's also examining his connection to his family via, uh, again, via his connection to God and to this place. Um, so I think, I think having it occur where it does, that sort of one magical like moment of the show, um, is, is kind of just illustrates the moment that Dembe is in, which is he's torn between these two. Like in his mind, he's with Sam in his mind, he's also with his family, uh, and Wumi is a representation of that in that moment. So I think that's, that's why it li lands there, and it's, it's how I am able to think uh, about that like little fantasy moment um, as, as like an actual uh, movement forward in his character arc, you know? Mm -hmm. I wanna come back and talk about uh, the connection that you have with the actress that plays your sister, because I think it's really beautiful throughout the show. Uh, and so much of it is what it is in what is not said rather than what is just said in the play. But I, I wanna ask about that moment as a director that we were just talking about. And um, Atu had said that there were many different iterations of that. And what is that like as a director? Because I'm wondering what that looked like on the page, how Chris had written that. Was it written to be surreal or as a reflective memory? Or is that you guys in the rehearsal space seeing what you can do in this moment and finding something that maybe needs a little more of a surreal lift. Yeah, actually in the text, the dialogue appears continuously as it does from the moment that precedes it and the moment that precedes it. So there's no distinction that says this is a surreal lifted moment. I think it's exactly the same. So we actually demarcated like where the memory begins, where it ends, and then we explore different ways of, um, of uh, realizing it. At one point, I think you were running around the room um, uh, like in a circle chasing each other. I think we pantomimed like tree climbing at a certain point. We did everything. I'm so glad it's less physical. <laughs> no. As in, don't have to, like, physical enough. Do like a full on jog around on the stage eight times a week, nah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then like, when you have like an extraordinary cast of actors, you can play, you can explore. And so Latoya and Atu were so willing to try like so many different things. And you saw how text heavy it is. Like, yeah. it's like a word and a word, it goes back and forth. So you not only need to have those words like embedded in you, but then be able to like express them in different ways. So um, it was really rewarding because um, we had something like a gesture on the page that Chris had put, and then we were able to realize in a way that felt natural and interesting for us. I, I imagine that's something that you have to work out though within the context of the entire play as well, where you can't just sort of put that scene together, that piece together, and then it can fit in the show. You have to watch it within the show so many times to know exactly how it's gonna Absolutely. work out. Absolutely, and that's why it changed. It changed in previews. It changed almost at the last minute. Yeah, yeah. it changed almost like right before we were we were freezing the show. Um, it just continued to to change because I I think it there were there were there was a time in there where it kind of just felt like a, a hiccup mm -hmm. in terms of the energy and and I think what we've landed on is something that we can all like it, it helps us move forward. Like I said yeah. in in the play, so I think it's really lovely what we've landed on. Now, the, re the relationship with uh, the actress who plays your sister, I excuse me, I forgot her name. Wumi. Her name is Latoya Edwards, the actor. Yes. Uh, yeah. She's wonderful, but like the relationship between the two of you, there is so much in it that is unsaid within the text. Does that come from a rehearsal period over time, just knowing your characters, knowing how to carry your characters? You know, I count myself so fortunate to have uh, Latoya to work opposite because... We met um, right shortly after the cast was announced. We met at a show, and it was an immediate connection. Yeah, there's this sense of, like, as a sister, she knows Dembe without having to say anything. Exactly. She understands everything about yeah. him, even if she doesn't know everything. Exactly. And I think we're, we're both very fortunate also because uh, I think we are very... Each of us is connected to our siblings as well. And so I think that that lived experience was something that we were able to bring to that relationship. Um, I, I have three sisters and I'm very close to all of them. So they, for me, Wumi has become this like composite of all three of them, <laughs> which is really special. And um, also just like looking, just Latoya is such an open and generous person. And so it's just like really easy to share that intimacy with her, you know? Um. There is a sense we were talking about Western influence, but there is a um, suspiciousness that is felt, I think, from the other characters in the play when it comes to your character about your real motivation in terms of being over uh, in Uganda as a doctor. Can you talk about exploring that and sort of trying to maintain your characters, not 
I don't want to use the innocence is the wrong word, but I would say um, right uh, objective while other people are suspicious of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the suspiciousness is is actually helpful because I don't think he is sure himself uh, why he is there. And, um, you know, the character was originally written as a, as a Caucasian Northern Irish doctor, and I had uh, read the script, and I told my agent I wanted to go in for it, and I said to Chris and Ellen, who's the director of uh, the original production, I said, there's a chance here to talk about biracial identity a little bit and about somebody trying to find something by going back to the country from where their blackness comes from, uh, existing in such a Western space, especially Derry in Northern Ireland. And I've spent some time in Northern Ireland. And, you know, I, I can imagine growing up there as a person of color is even more isolated than it is in other areas of, uh, of the West. So um, that confusion and, and that feeling that suspicion uh, I'm very cautious of speaking for people, but certainly for me, it is a daily occurrence in the in the life of somebody who is who is biracial. So, for me, existing, you know, Artie was just talking there about the connection uh, with Latoya and, and the connection that Dembe has with Wumi, and the opposite end of that spectrum is that, um, you know, Sam is not a person who is super open and super. Um, you know, connected in that way. He's a person who feels very isolated. And, you know, there's an imposter syndrome that comes along uh, at times with being a person from from two different cultures. And I think that's part of the reason why he's there. You know, he has a set of skills as a doctor to be able to help in an area that needs help, but it's also a chance for him to explore a side of himself that he feels disconnected from. Um, and uh, But that said, because as well, because of his sexuality and because of his relationship with Dembe, he is viewed as a suspect or maybe even as a predator in, in some ways, which is not the case, but that's the way that uh, sure. Dembe's family sort of, or at least uh, his Wombi, Wombi, excuse me? Wombi, yeah, yeah Wombi, uh, kind of suspects him of being at one point. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, I think that that... Um, Unless I misread that, which if I did, I'm no, so No, no, I don't think you did at all. I don't <laughs> think you did at all. But I think that <laughs> sense of... wild misread on my part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're accurate. Yeah. No, no I, I think that that suspicion has layers to it. You know, yeah. I, I think that... Um, their sexuality is a danger to them in the situation that they're in. So it doesn't really matter what his intentions are, the fact that he is tempting her brother with a lifestyle, whether Dembe w wants to engage in that or not, the fact that somebody is encouraging that side of him is a threat, possibly to his life. So it doesn't really matter what Sam's intentions are. The fact that he is, as he would be classified in that area of the world, a, a white person, it doesn't help. Uh, and the fact that, um, you know, the fact that he seems to be here as part Ugandan and, and sort of a, a slight betrayer of that culture is another layer to that suspicion. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you're accurate that there's definite, definitely a suspicion of him by all of the characters in the play, even Dembe at times. Um, but to be honest, as, a, as an actor, that's really useful and it's not difficult to draw from my lived experience to understand that feeling and 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 feel that and i think it's i think it's valuable for people to see you know i i don't think that it's an issue that's discussed a lot there's so many issues in this play that uh take precedent over that one rightly so but um but it's great when it comes up because it's an unexpected question to throw into this play that already has such high stakes as you said it's just such a smart little curve to, to, yeah. to be tossed in. And, and I feel like the reaction I get from people in the audience about that moment is a teller of how undiscussed that issue is. Um, the rest of the play seems to take a pretty clear stance on <laughs> whether or not it's okay to be gay or whether or not it's, you know, that's not really an issue that's up for question. But uh, people often say to me like, so it, like uh, people often ask me, is he lying? Is his mother really Ugandan or is he lying? You know, that's something I hadn't even thought about before I started doing the play. Um, but I think there's a natural suspicion or a natural questioning that um, people who aren't as easy to box up are subject to uh, that maybe others aren't. And I think that the audience reaction has, has even shown that. You know? Also, just like in the context of our, our world, like I think uh, it would not be unrealistic for Africans to be suspicious of people from the West, just like yeah, generally, exactly. period. Absolutely. Yeah, what has happened on that continent? Exactly. Like, you know? he, those who are there to help, whether they were having a relationship with a man or you, he was straight and having a relationship with an African woman, I think there would be yeah. suspicion of the same kind. Exactly. That's what I mean about Les. There's just so much, Sam represents so many things, and especially because he's the only character in the play, it's 
you know, he 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 represents all of those things yeah. in one, you know, and that's hard for him, but it's that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, guys, I have to let you go. I want to ask one more question before I do let you go, though. Uh, two, uh, what is it like to play um, a character, uh, a gay character whose stakes are so high? It's a life and death situation for for Dembe in this in this show. Um, you know, I, last night during the show, I just like. We're we're what like six weeks into this into this run, and um, you know you're always searching for ways to keep it alive and keep it fresh. And something that came to me yesterday was to be of service. Um, and I think ultimately there are so many people who will come to see this play, and um, who have experienced the same thing that this character is going through. And I think that that is the way I sort of. Um, I'm able to go there for those two hours, uh, just remembering that the, that this uh, set of circumstances, this experience, is a short uh, sort of like blast of um, intensity to go through. But ultimately, it is in service of people whose real lives are, you know, smashing up against these circumstances too. So I think that I try to carry that with me. I try to carry the stories, like I try to carry my own story, try to carry the stories of people who I know who have experienced a lot of Dembe circumstances. And so like if I can be of service in that way, I think it's easy actually to go through the, the emotional journey, so. Yeah. Um, guys, I love the show. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's called The Rolling Stone. It's currently at Lincoln Center, the Mitzi Newhouse Theater. Everybody give them a huge round of applause for coming by today. Let's hear it. <laughs>